All right, welcome back. In the next five minutes, let's do a crash course on linear regression. Thank you to Katerina Zorchich for producing these slides. So what is linear regression? We can keep it very simple. It's a method to quantify the relationship between some continuous outcome and one or more predictors. Here's a toy example. How does age affect the number of gray hairs? So number of gray hairs, that's a continuous outcome. And in this case, age is our predictor. And the basics of linear regression dates back to high school math, where we're trying to determine the slope of a line using the formula y equals mx plus b. So on the y-axis here, we have the number of gray hairs, x-axis is age, and then we can calculate the slope of the line, which is m, as well as the intercept, which essentially is the number of gray hairs when the age is the lowest possible value. And in this made up data set, the lowest possible value is 20. There's um, different types of linear regression. Simple linear regression, where you have one predictor variable, and multiple linear regression, where you have multiple variables. Um, it is not multivariate, it's multivariable. And that's a common mistake that people make. So let's come up with this toy example. I'm a physician and I swear that residency has caused lots of gray hairs. Uh, so maybe we want to quantify the relationship between number of gray hairs and age of a physician. We can come up with this formula here and let's break down the components for what it actually means. So a y, this is our outcome or dependent variables. Um, so that is the number of gray hairs. Uh, beta naught is our intercept term. Uh, beta one, this is the slope uh, for our predictor, which in this case is gonna be um, age. And then you also have an error term in linear regression. We won't go into details uh, for that uh, today. So how do we interpret these coefficients uh, after we get them back from the model? So as mentioned, your intercept or beta naught, that's the expected outcome, the expected number of gray hairs when age is the smallest possible value. And then um, beta one, this is the slope. This is the change in the number of gray hairs for each one year increase in age. I hope that makes sense. How do we actually get results for regression? So first you have to collect data. So in this case, we would need a cohort of physicians and I presume we could maybe bring them into the lab and count the number of gray hairs they have and determine their age. We would then upload that data and we could use a programming language such, such as R. And then within R, it has a very simple package that you can use to then do linear regression. You can pause here and see what the code would actually look like for R or SAS. So um, we can also just ask ChatGPT, hey, can you write the code uh, to do this? Uh, ChatGPT is very good at basic uh, programming tasks like that. And this is the output you would get from uh, R, for example. So um, here we see um, what our uh, intercept term is, as well as our slope for age. So let's write this out in bigger letters so it's a bit more clear. So this is the formula that it gives us. So for each one unit um, or one year increase in age, the number of gray hairs in this very made up example would be 1.25 more hairs. Uh, trust me, physicians, um, it's a lot more than that uh, each year. Now, there's more to linear regression than just understanding the basics. It's also knowing when is it the right tool to use and when is it the wrong tool to use. And you can get a better sense of this by knowing the assumptions of linear regression. This is too much information for this talk, but the acronym I came up with to remember the assumptions of linear regression are LINE. So L stands for linearity. Relationship between the independent and dependent variables is linear. If instead it was like a U-shaped curve or an S-shaped curve, well, of course, linear regression is the wrong tool to use because again, linear regression works well predominantly as a general rule when you have a linear association. Um, the individual observations have to be independent. And the last two features, too much information here, but homoscedasticity or normal, uh, normality. And you can pause the screen if you want a bit more details. Well, that's it. And we made it in under five minutes. Thanks again to Katarina Zorchich for producing these slides and to the many uh, team members in my lab that helped to improve the quality of these slides. That's it for today.